Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game that just ended in round 6 of the 2021 uh, Tata Steel Chess Tournament, Alexander Donchenko vs Alireza Firuzja and uh, well, uh, as, as all the games we show on this channel, this one is also quite the game. So without further ado, let's check it out. Donchenko uh, with the white pieces opens with d4 and we're not gonna dwell too long on the opening because it's a very very long well-known uh, theoretical line. Uh, d5, c4, we have e6 uh, and and now knight to c3. We have bishop to b4, uh, so the queen's gambit declined this on the board. We have knight to f3, and now black grabs the c4 pawn. So d captures on c4, and e3. Uh, Firuzja go, uh, Donchenko goes after the c4 pawn, and Firuzja defends it. So let's see uh, how, how this uh, middle... What are you doing? Yeah, and I left some papers there, and now now Medo is trying to you know take advantage of the situation. So b5, and now a4, uh, challenging those uh, advanced pawns. We have c6, Firuzja defends it, and now bishop to d2. So just continuing development. This has all, all been very very analyzed. We have a5, and now uh, a captures on b5. We have uh, as the b5 square is now attacked twice. So bishop captures on c3, b, uh, bishop captures on c3, and only now c captures uh, on b5. And here b3. Point being that black is unable to play b4 and c3 because the rook on a8 is undefended. So here white would just play bishop captures on b4, and white would have uh, an extremely, uh, well, great position. So here instead, after this b3 by white, we have bishop to b7 by Firuja. Again, uh, this has all been played before. Uh, b captures uh, on c4 and now uh, b4. So here black gets the two connected pass pawns, but white gets a massive center. So a bit of a trade-off. Bishop back to b2 and now knight to f6. Firuja continues development, prepares castling and so on. We have bishop to d3. White also wants to castle and now castles and castles. Uh, we have knight b to d7 and now knight to d2. Uh, we have e5 by black, uh, taking advantage of the knight moving from f3, so we want to strike here in the center, and bishop back to c2. And here, uh, queen to c7. So uh, this position has been reached several times, and there are a couple of very popular options here. Bishop to a4 is a known move, uh, uh, advancing in the center with d5 is a known move, f4 is a known move, uh, and some of the other lesser played ones. But here, h3, the move Donchenko played, is a new move, so... Uh, as of move 17, we have a completely new game. And this is basically where our game starts, uh, as both of them knew all of this uh, by heart, uh, most likely. So here, uh, Alireza continues by bringing the rook into the game. Rook f to e8, uh, and now comes a bishop to b3. So uh, putting more, uh, getting more uh, defense to this c4 pawn, getting the bishop on this diagonal, and also you, you just keep an eye on everything. This is defended, the a4 square is nicely defended, so black cannot just advance that a pawn. And you wait and see what black will do. Uh, Firuja goes to h6, and now knight back to f3. So here you're kind of trying to bait this e4 move, but e4 doesn't really do anything for black. It just closes up this uh, light square diagonal, which is not something you want to do. And it's a question whether this pawn will be a, a weakness or a strength, but most likely a weakness. White can play uh, this, uh, take away this bishop's defense of the pawn, then attack the pawn uh, s several times. And it's just going to be... Uh, a problem for black to defend it. So instead, after f the knight f3, we have rook to a6. Firuja doesn't even bother uh, defending the pawn. He offers it, and now uh, let's see what happens here. So Donchenko decides to grab the pawn. We have knight captures on e5, knight captures and d captures on e5. Attacking the knight here, knight to d7, and now f4. And it seems like a, 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 a very strong position for white. Uh, a, a lot of presence in the center here. Uh, if c5 is played, you can even uh, get both of these bishops fully operational. So white has something to play for. Uh, Firuja goes knight to c5, blocks the pawn, and also prepares to bring the knight over to the central e4 square. Bishop to c2, uh, and now uh, a4, uh, continuing to advance those pawns. So this is what Firuja had in mind when he sacrificed that pawn, and it does seem black has uh, plenty of compensation. So here, f5 by Donchenko, he continues the attack, he wants to play e6, and now b3 by Firuja. Uh, here you're basically deciding between b3 and a3. Firuja goes b3, bishop back to b1, 
and now rook a back to a8 uh, here uh, a3 uh, would be interesting uh, if you want to trade everything down for example captures 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 and then rook captures on e5 uh, or rather queen captures on e5 even better uh, this is what would happen if Firuja went for a3 but Firuja for the moment uh, wants to keep uh, both of his pawns so he goes back rook a8 a8 probably with the idea of bringing the other rook into uh, the attack with rook to d8 and now e6 uh, white continues the attack so saying that maybe rook to a8 was just a little bit slow uh, we have queen to g3 by Firuja setting up uh, setting up a nice checkmate here as the bishop and queen are attacking the pawn and here white should defend with queen to e2 but it's hard to realize that when when we just uh, enter this position so here uh, white defended with rook to f2 but this allows uh, Firuja a very sneaky idea first he blocks off uh, the attack with f6 not allowing the capture and also now uh, both of the bishops are blocked and now white is the one black is the one who will try to attack uh, we have bishop to d4 uh, by Donchenko and now knight to e4 with an attack on the rook here. So here white trades with captures, captures and now rook to a3. Again, you don't want to allow a3 so you block it with the rook. Uh, it seems like a very passive square for the rook. Uh, but if you want to stop those queenside pawns, you have to play something. Uh, and here we have rook e to c8. Now going after this c pawn here. We have c5, Donchenko defends it by advancing it, and now king to h7. The king will be much safer here on h7. Uh, we have queen to d2, now adding another defender to the second rank, but here uh, here we uh, get to the position from the thumbnail. Here, uh, Firuja played b2, and it's such a weird move to play. Uh, rook to d8 seems like, uh, seems like the way to go, or even rook c to b8, preparing to push the pawn. Uh, but here, Firuja plays a move that I often characterize as a tall move, uh, as it's something uh, not everyone would play, not, not, not a lot of people would even consider this move, because, uh, well, uh, the b2 square is defended three times, so uh, what, do you, what do you gain by actually playing b3 other than giving up a pawn? So here, uh, obviously, if uh, the b2 pawn is captured, or, uh, for example, with the bishop, then rook captures on c5, and it seems like black definitely has compensation. The rook can co now come to c2, the other rook can come to c8, you can double up rooks here, and it, it seems that uh, black is definitely getting something. Plus, he eliminated the past c pawn. However, uh, Donchenko said, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to capture it with the bishop, I'm going to capture it with the queen. And it doesn't seem like uh, Firuja has anything here. So he captured with the queen, but now the position is completely lost for white. But it's, uh, it's uh, the, you know, how far Firuja saw that this pawn cannot be captured by the queen is just uh, amazing. So feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for Firuja here uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting all the way to the move. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to b8. Either of the rooks will do. So either rook a or rook c to b8 uh, wins the game for black. Point is, after what was played in the game, rook a to b8, you have to move the queen. So queen to a2 was played, and now comes rook to b1 with check. That was the point of bringing the queen over to b2. So you have rook to b8 with tempo and now you bring the rook uh, to b1 again with tempo so the the white king is in check rook to f1 so donchenko defends everything defends against check checkmate still being defended uh, and now rook c to b8 so threatening just captures here followed by uh, rook to b1 or if the queen remains there even uh, just uh, dropping the rook uh, okay so the bishop for the moment is defending that that uh, but uh, just uh, give you an idea if you play something weird uh, even rook a to b2 is enough because uh, the the queen can never uh, uh, not be defending the b2 square so even if the bishop captures then it's just checkmate so uh, rook to b2 would definitely be a scary threat so here queen to f2 was played now saying okay you can do uh, drop the rook the other rook all the way to b1 my queen will be defending against checkmate but now rook captures on f1 with check king captures uh of course if, if the queen captures then just rook to b1 or, or even bishop captures on g2 is enough there is nothing you can do here uh if the queen captures then rook to b1 is indeed checkmate there is nothing to, to block the check with so here after rook captures on f1 we have king captures on f1 and now rook to b1 with check 
king to e2 and now comes the move Firuzja had to see before he played the b2 uh, pawn to b2 move uh, because this is the only move now that uh, wins for black and that move is I'm sure you'll see it now once I've mentioned it queen to b8 this is what Firuzja played and now there is no defense against queen, queen to b5 check bishop covers f3 rook covers f1 and queen to b5 will be deadly so here uh there's nothing you can do if you just ignore it for example with e7 then like i said queen b5 check and that's it king d2 you're gonna get queen to c4 threatening uh checkmate and if that is defended with some sort of a move here then just queen a2 check rook has to block and this is now checkmate so ignoring the threat uh, rarely helps and also it doesn't help here so queen to f4 was played freeing up the f2 square for the for the white king uh, but now queen to b5 with check and again it doesn't really help if you go here then it's still just queen to f1 with check you have to go up the board and queen captures and g2 check king h4 and now rook to h1 will uh be game over there's no way to defend against this even queen g3 just to rook captures and that's it queen captures on h3 queen to g5 is checkmate so everything ends in checkmate here so after queen to b5 check you don't really gain anything by king f2 so king to d2 was played uh, but now comes queen to b4 with check and now this comes with check also the rook is under attack but it doesn't matter you're, you're getting checkmated whatever you play so here uh, donchenko tried sacrificing the rook to survive a little bit longer queen captures on a3 and now queen captures on e4 eliminating that bishop but it doesn't help queen to c1 check king to d3 and now queen to f1 with check and it was in this position on move 43 that alexander donchenko resigned in the game and a great great victory for alireza firuja as uh, the white king has nowhere to go you, you could of course uh, go to c2 or d1 then queen to d1 is checkmate and if you go up the board it doesn't help rook to d1 check and the king has nowhere to go this is covered by the queen this is pawn this is rook you have to block and then it's just checkmate uh so yeah uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant game and the brilliant attack by Firuja. He was able to trick uh, Donchenko with that tall move. Let's uh, see it one more time. Maybe uh, not in slow motion. It's a pawn move, so let's just push it like pawn to b2. Really uh, amazing stuff, uh, and it, it's such a weird move to play because it, it's just defended three times. So uh, even considering this, just shows how. Uh, how well, uh, you know, uh, Firuja is planning these attacks and it, it, there's nothing wrong with the move. White can just play a bad move or, 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 or you know, a, 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 you know, maybe a lesser move. But the, the, there, is, there are no good moves here for, uh, for White. Just capturing with the bishop is best, but uh, Donchenko tried to keep everything and then he lost everything. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Connor Jolly, Josip Gavran, David Kimura, Ayal uh, Goodman, and Alima Kasenova for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.